Being able to work with the terminal is one of the most important skills that I think every developer should have, but using Mac's default terminal isn't all that great. And I will admit there's a bunch of other better tools out there. So one of the ones that I like to use is iTerm and you can just go over to their website, which is iTerm2.com and scroll down to the download button and click download. And that's of course going to download a zip file. Right, so once that's done, you can go ahead and unzip the file and just pull that into your applications folder. And now you should have iTerm as an application on your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and just say that that's safe to open. And looking at this right now, uh, I'll admit this doesn't look too different from Mac's default terminal, but trust me on this, there are many more features in here that the original Mac terminal doesn't have. Uh, but just so you guys can see very clearly, I'm going to make sure that I zoom in and uh, there's a few things that I'm going to do to this terminal just to make it look a little bit better and make it a lot easier to read. So I'm going to install something called oh my ZSH, which you can find if you just go ahead and Google oh my ZSH. Uh, and I will leave the link to this GitHub repo in the video description below. But let's just scroll down and take a look at the description here or the readme. And you can see that under the section of basic installation, we can install this using a curl call or there is a manual installation slightly further down the page. I'm not sure if I've actually missed that or not. No, there we go. So that would be the manual installation, git clone, uh, and then uh, copy one file and then so on. So if, uh, if for some reason the basic installation fails, you can scroll down and use that one. But let's do this with the curl call. So I'm just going to copy that and paste that line into my terminal. And this is going to clone oh my ZSH down to my computer. And now it's done. So now I've got ZSH on my computer, but I don't really like the original theme. So it comes with this default theme called uh, Robbie Russell. And if I scroll down here, uh, you can see we're talking about themes and the default theme is Robbie Russell. Now I find that a much better theme is actually Agnosta, but I'm probably going to switch themes again later on in this tutorial. But just to show you guys how to do this, uh, what you want to do is edit your ZSHRC file. So you should now have a file um, in your root directory uh, called .zshrc. And I can confirm that if I just type ls in the command prompt. In fact, it's a hidden file, so I'm going to have to do ls-a. And there it is. So I can vim edit this or I can just, just type open ZSHRC and that's going to open it in uh, my default editor. And let's just zoom in over here and see if we can fi find the uh, line that says Robbie Russell and what I wanted or ZSH theme Robbie Russell. And let's just change that to Agnosta and Mac kicked in with an autocorrect. Now, if we save this and uh, I pull that file aside, close terminal and open the terminal again. Uh, and I zoom in just so that you guys can see this clearly. Uh, my terminal has indeed changed somewhat, but there do seem to be a few little missing icons or missing fonts or something like that. And that's because if we read the documentation back here, uh, it does say that many themes require power line fonts. So what you guys need to do now is either right click on this or just uh, click on this and go over to the GitHub repo for power line fonts. And you're going to want to install these fonts to your computer. So I'm going to go with these instructions here because everything else over here is actually for Ubuntu, but uh, under other environments, which is my Mac, uh, I'm going to go ahead and clone this. So that's just going to clone the fonts down to my computer. So if I hit enter, that'll clone them down. Okay, so once that's done, we just need to follow the rest of the instructions here, which is to CD into that fonts directory that we just cloned down. And you can see that I'm working on the master branch there. And all I want to do is run this install sh file. And now that that's been installed, we should actually have some power line fonts on our computer. And we can test that out by just going over to iTerm, preferences and profiles and text. And now we can just change the font from whatever our default font was 
to one of these fonts for Powerline. And I think the one that I like the most is uh, Source Source Code Pro for Powerline. So let me just close that now, close this. And um, whoops, I'm actually not sure if that saved because my icons aren't showing up. So let's go back here, Preferences, Profiles, Text, Source Code Pro for Powerline. Okay, let's just make sure that I close the terminal and open that up again. Okay, and that's all that was needed to uh, change the icons. And now this looks a lot better. Now that we've got the font set up in our terminal, the next thing I wanna do is actually set up a different theme because the theme that I really like using is actually called Power Level 9K. So let's go back over to the browser and I'm gonna do a search for that. So Power Level 9K or 9000. And uh, this is in a GitHub repo by uh, Bill Byrne. And I'm just going to, well, I'm going to leave a link for this in the video description below, but I want to scroll down to the readme section now. And uh, let's take a look at the installation process. Now there's actually um, a bunch of different ways to install uh, Powerline. So let's just click on this link again. And if we scroll down, I'm actually not even looking for the section on Mac with Homebrew. What I'm looking for is option two to install this with oh my ZSH, seeing as we've just installed that to our computer. So what I wanna do here is also just copy this line here, which is to git clone uh, this file or this uh, directory down to our computer. Uh, and this is also gonna put it in the exact right place where we need it to be. So I'm gonna hit enter and that's gonna clone it down. Right, so once that's complete, we can go back over to the documentation here. And the next thing we need to do is obviously set the theme. So I'm gonna just copy that and I've still got my uh, file open here. So I'm going to make sure that I paste that theme name into the variable. And now if I close uh, terminal and I open the terminal again, you can see that a lot has actually changed. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit and uh, yeah, We've now got some yellow text and we've got a few other things added to the side here. So what I'd like to do now is just jump back over to this file. And I also wanna jump back over to the documentation here. And uh, I think I'm looking for the original file or the original page in this repo. So let's go back and back again. And um, here it actually talks about the left and right prompts. And I don't really like having all this information here. I don't think I need the time and the status and all of that. So I'm gonna make sure that I just remove that by copying these two lines and pasting them all the way at the bottom of uh, my ZSH file. And I'm gonna get rid of everything that's on the right hand side of the screen. So I'm just gonna leave that as uh, open parentheses and now, if I close this and open it again, um, yeah, this is looking much, much better. And now that I've uh, set up the fonts correctly, the next thing I wanna do is change the color scheme. So I'm going to go over to my item and then just go over to preferences, make sure I go to profiles and colors. And I can choose from one of the color presets here. So there is uh, solarized dark, which I do think looks much better, but I don't really like the green here. I think there's a color scheme that I do really like, which is actually on GitHub and I've already opened that. And that is the one by Martin Sealer. So I'm just gonna scroll down here and you can see that this looks much, much better uh, in my opinion. So let's just uh, click on the download button. And this is actually gonna download a material design colors item colors file. So let's click download. I'm not gonna worry about translating that. I'm actually just gonna save this to my download. So let's save. And uh, now that should be uh, on my computer, but my computer has a habit of just renaming that to dot text. So let's just uh, make sure that I use the correct name there, item colors. Uh, because if it's not a dot item colors, this isn't gonna work. And now let's go over to color presets, import, and uh, from our downloads file, let's import material design colors. So let's open that. 
and now we should have that as an option and uh, yeah, I know there's a lot of windows here, so this can get a bit confusing, but this was uh, items preferences. So I'm going to close that now. And now if I go back over to item, you can see that uh, the color scheme has changed quite a bit. And uh, yeah, I think that this is pretty awesome. Um, but there's one more thing that I want to do, and that is to add in syntax highlighting for item so let's go back over to the browser and i'm just going to do a search in this window here for syntax highlighting for zsh and that's just going to let me know that uh, the command that i'm typing is actually a real command or not so let's go back here uh, to that link and i will also leave a link to this in the video description um, and now let's just scroll down to the installation instructions here and uh, yeah, it looks like I've got a C install.md. And let's see if we can find the installation instructions for Mac. Okay, how to install in your ZSHRC. So what we want to do here is clone this. And I'm fine with doing that. And that's going to clone that down to our computer. And then the next thing we need to do is uh, add this line of code into our zshrc file. Um, now I'm not sure if this is going to work correctly, but let's just run this and see. So I'm going to hit enter. And now if I go, uh, well, let's open that zshrc file. So let's open uh, slash dot zshrc. Okay, and zoom in just so that you can see. Uh, but what that echo line should have done is written a line all the way at the end of my ZSHRC file to make sure that we're using the syntax highlighting as a source. So that has been uh, uh, edited correctly. I'm just going to close this. I'm going to close item and open item again. And now, well, let's just zoom in so that you guys can see this better. And I don't know why I keep making this mistake every single time, but I always make the window bigger before I zoom in. And then it zooms in much larger than the screen is. Right, but now whenever I run an actual command, something like CD, I should get green text to tell me that this is a real command. But if I were to type in a fake command, then obviously that's going to show up as red. So those are all the tools that I really like using in iTerm. And that is my iTerm set up and done completely. And that is the end of the video. So if you made it this far, there's a couple things that you can do to help me. First of all, subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment saying something nice, hopefully. Share this video with your friends because all of that stuff is going to help my channel grow. And I'm also feeling a little lonely, so don't forget to follow me on social media.